Next, uh, Mr. Kelmer. Thank you, Chairman, and uh, thank you both for being with us today. I'm hoping to get to two topics. Uh, first, um, as you both know, changes to the military health system have resulted in downsizing at several military treatment facilities, including Naval Hospital Bremerton in my neck of the woods, um, which recently closed its emergency and its labor and delivery departments. Uh, prior to that downsizing, our area already had uh, challenges accessing care. It had been identified by the Department of Health and Human Services as a high-risk area and a health shortage area. We raised concerns about this prior to the downsizing because of that, and unfortunately, the um, closures have had a real impact on our region and on service members. Um, I really think that the, that the network analysis that was done was really off. Uh, the hiring goals were really off. And this isn't sort of a theoretical conversation. We did a roundtable with submariners in our area who have been unable to receive routine screenings uh, or medical care. That impacts fleet readiness. I met with a pregnant sailor who, due to downsizing at the Naval Hospital, was forced to go to a local hospital, um, waited eight hours uh, in the emergency room, uh, or sorry, in the waiting room, and uh, ultimately miscarried in their waiting room. And these aren't isolated in insolence. I bring this to your attention because after several letters and questioning and hearings and meetings with the head of DHA, where we've emphasized the inability of the network to handle the burdens of the clo closures at the Naval Hospital, the concerns of my community just aren't being heard. And so I want to raise this again and ask you if DOD can direct DHA to review some of that downsizing in underserved areas like Kitsap County. I want to ask you what tools are in place to reassign military and civilian providers to areas where there has been a significant degradation in care that is impacting folks in uniform. And I want to know if there's any plan to reassign providers to areas like Kitsap County where we have seen a significant and frankly dangerous decline in healthcare quality for service members. Well, well thank you, sir. I'd just like to start by saying um, uh, the health and welfare of the force is extremely important to me, and I really appreciate all your support and the support of Congress um, over the years. Um, we continue to follow uh, congressional intent uh, to, as you know, we, uh, we were mandated to uh, consolidate military health care under DHA, and of course there are decisions that have to be made there. And, and since that decision was, was made, uh, you know, we faced a global pandemic that put, uh, that put pressure on, uh, on, on the workforce across America, the medical workforce across America, and so it made it uh, a bit more difficult to, uh, to do some things. And so we're facing some of the same challenges that, uh, that the medical community, community across the, the country uh, are facing. Um, but what we're doing about it is we're trying to utilize a variety of tools, in, including uh, direct hiring authorities. Uh, we're uh, exploring bonuses and, uh, and incentives uh, to hire, to, to, to get the right talent in uh, to, to fill the vacancies that, that you mentioned. And I will, I will ask uh, our new DHA leader to come in and, and sit down with you and, and, and brief you specifically on Bremerton and, uh, and what, the cha what our challenges are and what we're doing about it. So. Secretary, if I could make a quick comment. Please go ahead. On that, um, in, in, in my travels around the military, uh, the, the number one topic that I get in terms of quality of life, et cetera, is the healthcare system. I was chief of staff of the Army. Uh, uh, you know, three and a half years ago. Uh, in my first year, this was an issue, and we were asked as chiefs at that time um, to write an assessment of what we thought of the congressionally mandated consolidation into the DHA. Every one of the chiefs at that time, as I recall, we wrote that this was going to result in significant risk. What we're seeing today, seven years later, eight years later, uh, is the fraying. It's not broken, but we're seeing the fraying of the defense health care system, which is one of the biggest health care systems in America. And, and that's really cause for concern. And it's the number one issue that's on a lot of soldiers, sailors, airmen, Marines' minds and their families. It's a big deal. I, I think acknowledging that, we are seeing that. Yep. We are seeing that in our area. And I, I just, I, I, I plea with you to right. take a look at what's happening in our region, to look at the impact on readiness um, on sailors and on their families. Right. Uh, because I, I don't, you know, Sitting across from a sailor who miscarried after right. waiting for eight hours to get care, 
that this is not acceptable, and we've got to do better for these right. folks who are stepping up for our country. So, thank you, Chairman. I yield back.